So last night we had the 2023 elections and Democrats had a pretty good night. And we're going to do a brief overview on these results. And I'm probably going to make several videos throughout the week talking about more of these specific takeaways. You know, one about Virginia, one about the RNC as a whole, uh, the Pennsylvania Republican Party. Got a couple of ideas floating around uh, considering the results we had. So I'm not going to go crazy in depth in this video. We're just going to do a brief overview summary of the results we had. For those of you who joined us on the live stream yesterday, thank you all for joining us. I had a lot of fun doing it. I always like live streaming the results uh, and getting those numbers in as they come. It's a lot more fun than just doing it after the fact. But, you know, in this video, we're going to talk about the election results very briefly. We're going to go over Virginia a little bit. We're going to go talk about Mississippi, Pennsylvania, Ohio. We're going to talk about some of the key takeaways, but we're going to go more in depth in future videos. So stay tuned for those. So as always, before we begin, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and liking this video if you enjoy. So starting off with Virginia, my state Senate prediction was on the money, 21-19. That looks like what we're about to have. As of the time of the recording of this video, we still have yet to have calls on the New York Times from District 24 and District 27, although both Republicans in these races have declared victory. So it's basically just a matter of time before Republicans uh, officially get called for these races. And I was correct. The only Republican flip in the state Senate would be District 24. I was right on the money with that one. The House of Delegates, I did get wrong, though. I had it 5149 Republican. It looks like at this point in time, it's going to be 5149 Democrats. So Virginia Democrats retained control of the legislature. They took it back. 2021 was the Republicans' brief stint at controlling the House of Delegates. That is no more, and Democrats have held control of the state Senate since 2019. So this obviously makes it a lot more difficult for Governor Yunkin to get his agenda through. And quite frankly, I think it's really the nail in the coffin for Glenn Yunkin's presidential ambitions. You know, provided he doesn't run for Senate, say, in 2026, but I'm not exactly sure that's something that's on his radar. So, you know, Glenn Youngkin himself is a popular governor, but Glenn Youngkin can only do so much to carry the Republican Party to victory. And I would actually argue that if Glenn Youngkin was not in the picture, Republicans would have done a lot worse tonight because there's a number of races here, uh, those two races in particular, that easily could have went the other way. District 24, Republicans had a great, great campaign there. And even then, they only won by two points. District 27, you know, Durant said some questionable things about abortion. Uh, obviously, you had the Roe effect still sort of hurting uh, Virginia Republicans at large, but she still managed to hang on. I think part of that's due to her, but also part of that's due to Glenn Youngkin as well, sort of stumping for her. So this night certainly could have been a lot worse for Republicans. Now, Again, everything I predicted, minus the House of Delegates, came to fruition, essentially. The state Senate being one of them. Mississippi governor, uh, Tate Reeves, did win, but he actually won by less than I thought he would win. He only won by 4.9. I'd have had him at about 6.5 points. So, you know, Brandon Presley, strong Democratic candidate. But again, this is Mississippi. You can only do so well in a state as red as Mississippi and as conservative as Mississippi even as a conservative Dem. And, you know, perhaps if Tate Reeves was 10 points more underwater, uh, Brandon Presley probably would be governor right now. But the fact of the matter is that wasn't the case. Tate Reeves held on, you know, despite being very corrupt and very unpopular. Moving on over to the Ohio ballot measures. Uh, this wasn't shocking at all. I said in my prediction video that the right to abortion was going to pass and the right to legal weed was also going to pass. So you had this pass 56-43 roughly and you had the marijuana ballot referendum pass. I don't know why it's not up here, but that passed 55-45, uh, I believe. Oh no, they passed by essentially the same margin. In fact, legal marijuana actually ran ahead of the uh, right to abortion ballot referendum. Interesting. And this one was a lot more nuanced than the abortion one. You see the abortion one's a bit more partisan than the legal marijuana one. But either way, both of these issues passed pretty easily. Uh, that was pretty predictable. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Republicans still have a massive problem with abortion. You really need some sort of remedy. You know, you need a massive strategic shift in messaging and even potentially policy because, you know, this is untenable. The Republican position on abortion is untenable with the electorate. Now that Roe v. Wade is gone, you cannot win statewide races with abortion as such an anchor in a lot of these states. I'm not talking about Ohio. You know, uh, J.D. Vance won by six, underperformed, but he still won. But, you know, abortion bogged down Republicans in Virginia. It even bogged down Daniel Cameron in Kentucky. 
you know, Andy Bashir was a popular incumbent governor. He wasn't going to lose. I had him only winning by around three and a half. He ended up winning by five. So, you know, I was a little off there, but, you know, within the margin of error, I was actually surprised at how well Andy Bashir did in these rural counties. I honestly thought he was going to run behind his 2019 numbers. If we pull those up real quick. Um, one example that sticks out to me is uh, Breed Hit County, which went to Andy Bashir by two and then went to Andy Bashir by 22 in 2023. So that just goes to show you how popular Andy Bashir was. Also shows you um, how weak of a campaign Daniel Cameron ran. Now, a lot of people are quick to point the finger and say that Daniel Cameron lost because of Trump. And I've been very critical of Trump's influence over the GOP, but I really don't think this was a Trump issue. I really just think this was a Daniel Cameron not running a great campaign issue. And also just this is a difficult state. You know, Andy Bashir comes from a political dynasty. He's very popular. He's well-liked. That's hard enough on its own. You know, Kentucky is a very red state, and that's one of the reasons why Andy Bashir only won by five points. You know, had this state been only R plus 10, he probably would have won by 15 points. So could have been worse in Kentucky, although the Kentucky results were very predictable. You know, Andy Bashir won fairly comfortably at the end of the day. Moving on over to Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Now, as it stands, Daniel McCaffrey is on track to win by around six points, I guess, when it's all said and done. And I think my prediction was about 5.2 or 5 or something like that. So I was almost on the money with this race. Now, this map is kind of crazy, though, because it certainly wouldn't have been on my bingo card that Erie County would go to the Republican while the state at large would go to the Democrat by over five percentage points. So that's pretty surprising. But, you know, looking at the county results, uh, Carolyn Carluccio, who was from the Philly suburbs, actually underperformed massively in the Philly suburbs. So that's going to be something we talk about in a future video because the Pennsylvania Republican Party has to do some major soul searching. Um, you know, some of the margins in these suburban uh, counties, Berks County, which is home to Redding, you know, this county, Donald Trump won by eight, I think, or six points. You know, these are unacceptable margins in some of these counties. Lancaster County only winning by 12. I mean, this is a disaster. I mean, you know, in some of these areas like Lancaster, you had Carolyn Carluccio do worse than Dr. Oz. The interesting caveat, though, is that in some counties, Carluccio actually outran Donald Trump very narrowly. Now, Cambria County, see, I knew that was an error because on election night, uh, she had gotten 74% of the vote in, in uh, Cambria County. And I thought that was kind of fishy because the turnout was near 2020 levels. That turned out to be a mistake. I kind of knew that was a problem. But just all across the board, Carolyn Carluccio just not hitting the numbers she needs. You know, Lycoming County, she runs about even with Trump. But look at this, Center County, she's down by four. I mean, that's actually not as bad as it was before. The results have updated, so... The performance is about where Oz was in 2022 in some of these counties, but in the suburbs, Bucks County, 11 points for Daniel McCaffrey. It might narrow up since we're 94% of the vote in, but Chester County, again, this is a nearly 20 point margin. Republicans can't win the state of Pennsylvania without getting Chester down a single digits, without winning Lancaster by around 20 Burke. So we could go all throughout Pennsylvania. I'm going to make a separate video on the Pennsylvania race and just the Pennsylvania GOP because... Uh, this is a state that Biden only won by one point back in 2020. There's no reason why Republicans should be performing so poorly in this state. And it's mostly due to the fact that the Pennsylvania GOP is just grossly incompetent. And there's a lot of infighting and there's a lot of problems with the Pennsylvania GOP. So that'll be its own video probably sometime later this week. But we'll take a look at New York now, my home state, because I thought there was a very interesting result on Long Island. Suffolk County Executive now, this was a county that Lee Zeldin won by 18 points, I think, back in 2022. Donald Trump won this county by just over 200 votes in 2020, won the county by seven in 2016. Ed Romaine, the Republican, became the first Republican elected county executive of Suffolk County in over 20 years. I think 1999 was the last time Suffolk County elected a Republican executive. So while a lot of big suburban counties around the country are trending democratic suffolk county and you know long island in general is one of the only areas that's trending more republican the only area that comes to mind is miami dade that's uh like suffolk county but suffolk county has seen a massive shift towards the right and that's because the new york gop has become very competent and the suffolk county gop in particular is obviously very very effective at what they do so this was an incredible result again 57 43 
a 14 point margin. Very impressive when you consider the fact that Donald Trump barely won this county in 2020. Uh, obviously, Zeldin won it by around 18, but this is a county that was blue uh, before 2021 in terms of the county government. You had a Democratic county executive and you had a Democratic legislature. That's gone now. Republicans now have full control of Suffolk County, one of the largest Republican-leaning counties in the country. Um, interestingly enough, Loudoun County in Virginia, I, I, I'm neglected to talk about it when we were talking about Virginia, but they're actually on the verge of ousting their progressive Democratic attorney, uh, Commonwealth's attorney. Um, so that's something that we might talk about in the future because that's honestly incredibly impressive that in Loudoun County, uh, which is a Biden plus 25 county, which probably went very blue in the legislative elections, you're going to potentially have a Republican end up winning uh, the Commonwealth's attorney, which is just what they call their district attorneys, because you've had a Democratic attorney general uh, really run amok when it came to crime in the area. Now, something I neglected to also talk about, and I'm kind of backtracking all over the place here, but Allegheny County, which if we look at the statewide results, was a disaster for Republicans. You know, this was a 63-37 margin for Daniel McCaffrey. Allegheny County executive race only went to the Democrats by two points. So if anyone lives in Allegheny County or knows uh, what this race is about, I'm curious why this race was so close. I don't know if the Democrat was a major progressive or something like that, but this is really interesting considering the fact that, you know, Allegheny County is obviously extremely democratic, and yet you have the executive only winning there by two points. Again, also goes to show you that local politics is not the same as statewide and federal politics. And of course, Allegheny County also has a Republican district attorney, which is really fascinating. But that's really it for the results rundown. We're going to talk about some of the bigger takeaways um, as we get into the rest of the week. I'll make some videos on abortion. We'll talk about um, Pennsylvania GOP. Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, etc. So obviously stay tuned for that. Um, as always, again, thank you guys for watching this video. Like this video down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one.